That's right, everybody. We're late as F because Microsoft done put it in me. Hey, this show is really, 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 really not going to be safe for work this time. We're going to talk about all kinds of, uh, of goodness, all kinds of fun, um, fun stuff. I'm wearing a shirt. Might give you an idea. Anyway, it's time <laughs> once again for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek, pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Every week, we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse or homoerotica. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me on this co-host, hey, speaking of homoerotica, Mike Kafis. Hey! <laughs> our guest this week is Violet Lavoie. Welcome back. Hey, hey, how are you? I'm, well, I'm, glad, right, yeah, I'm, you. I'm a little be better back. now. <laughs> now that now that Microsoft has uh, put something on me that I didn't want. Uh, anyway, so you didn't know you wanted it. You didn't know you needed it. <laughs> right, but but I got it. Uh, <laughs> so Violet Lavoie is a novelist yes, and film critic whose writing has appeared on uh, RogerEbert.com, TurnerClassicMovies.com, The Baltimore City Paper, AllMovie.com, and many others. She is the author of the short story of short story collections. I am Genghis Khan, and I'll fuck anything that moves. And Stephen Hawking, the best title ever, as well as the critically lauded dark experimental noir I Miss the World. Her latest book is Scarstruck, an erotic bisexual romantic a romance set in the 1950s Hollywood that's been compared to a lifetime movie written by James Elroy. Now, I know James Elroy is a writer, but what does that mean? What what kind of stuff does he write? I think he's he wrote Black Dahlia, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, mo he's most famous for L.A. Confidential, and probably more people know his work through the L.A. Confidential movie than through his novels. But he writes, he's a native son of L.A., and his story was that his, his mother was actually murdered in a, like a, blind date gone terribly wrong when he was 10 years oh, old and that's kind of that's kind of informed his entire life of you know so he writes these extremely dark unsparing uh la noirs kind of thing which is one of my favorite writers he definitely belongs wow. in the dc universe yeah <laughs> yeah geez. He's a literate, yeah dark Man. all right yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I, I think uh, I put a I put a post out uh, just a, a little bit ago, warning everybody this show is going to mm -hmm. be this, this one's going to be a little rough, uh, which is yeah. fine, which is good. We haven't done one of these in a long time, so I'm really yeah, happy yeah. to do it. Exactly. Um, but but uh, for my mother, keep your panties on, mom. All right, <laughs> yeah. she's watching, and uh, yeah. Sure, okay. she'll, yes, right. yeah. yeah. But um, uh, so I said, what did I say? I said, I said uh, uh, <laughs> all the triggers. <laughs> no, I said all yeah, the triggers, well, but I said. Everything. But I said that that your words are like um, you know, they're it's uh, sublime and as well as offensive, uh, like warm honey flowing over an ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Can I can I put that as a pull quote on the back? Sure, absolutely. That would be great. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So so I didn't get to read the whole book. Uh, I got through. I've been super. Oh my god! I've been so so busy. Um, well, but, but I was thinking about you because last time when we did I Miss the World, you said that you didn't do it either, and you said, but I only I usually get to hear audiobooks. So when keeping that in mind, I've recorded the audiobook for I Miss the World, and I'm halfway through nice. the recording of this one. So it will be available very soon on you know Amazon or whatever, wherever people buy these things. And I'm throwing uh, you credits, but don't worry. You got. You know, I mean, y'all got credits coming to you. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> Hell yeah. make it I read, so so I did I did read the first I got through the first four chapters so I made mm -hmm. sure I read some of it so that I okay. I, I knew something about it and mm -hmm. uh, and and I duly impressed I'm very impressed as wow. always not not that Thank I didn't you. think I would be I expected yeah, to be yeah. right, um, right. so Thank all you. right uh, yeah I was telling Violet a little bit before and before you came on so I'm gonna I'm gonna out myself as well uh, I'm about halfway through um, so a little bit further than you and uh, um, I enjoy it thoroughly. Um, and uh, like you, Pete, I'm, I'm, it's so hard for me to just have time to sit down and read. And as I was telling uh, Violet that uh, I have, I force my e-reader to read to me. Um, so uh, basically I get to hear the book and talk about the throbbing penis inside <laughs> of the such and such. And it will be throbbed and spewed all over and it's uh it's it's a it's a whole i mean and then she said yeah wow that's erotic uh robot fiction and yeah, so that's, that's right, a whole right. other genre we're opening up 
was right, going to say, right. Mike, at, at some point you're going to get, you know, you're going to be uh, listening to Siri and you're going to be like, man, I got a boner. What the fuck? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Well, I will say my publisher set the challenge just just in a what the fuck kind of moment where he said, if we sell a thousand copies of this book, we will rewrite a second edition where all the main characters are dragons. Oh, huh. just for the hell of it. You know, okay. we, will do it. We, ha we have it. We got the cover all mocked up. I've seen it. It's it'll blow your mind. I'm willing to write it. So but we just have to hit a thousand copies out in the world. Okay. And then that, that basilisk porn will hit the world. Now, and, dude, and that shit sells. I mean, I was reading an article about monster sex, and apparently it yeah. sells like mad. Yeah. You would be amazed. Well, I mean, that's the other thing that I wanted to talk about today, because I know that we were we were discussing the uh, the hidden phenomena of Kylo Ren, which is not something that I guess gets to like if like Fanish men are not. Are, I don't know. Are you or are you not aware of the the torrent torrent of adoration and lust that's flowing towards kylo ren from female fans uh, no evidently it is, it's gigantic I, I i hear a great disturbance in the forest as though a billion pairs of panties were suddenly soaked it's it's like that kind of thing wow yeah jeez really i was yeah, thought yeah. all right so so maybe this is I'm... kylo ren as adam driver i'm sorry pete but like <laughs> adam driver's kylo ren well okay well that's what we have to d dissect as well because the adam driver phenomena is another thing that that men are like you know t I, like he was a marine right so yeah. If you, if, yeah he was he was he, he like yeah. volunteered for september 11th when he was 18 or something and then he broke his collarbone see i know these things he broke his collarbone right before he was going to be sent out to afghanistan he didn't get to go so but if you, I've seen pictures of him in his, you know, Marine thing. I bet the other guys in his squadron were like, if you told me this guy was going to be the movie star, you know, I, I would want to be smoking whatever you're smoking because you obviously have a source to the good stuff, like whatever. Mm. But I think, but that's the other is, I don't know, is, is Adam Driver's appeal a mystery to men as well or? I don't find him, I mean, I find certain men particularly uh, desirable. Uh, yeah. you know the yeah. rock <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh i look at some men and i get it i'm like yeah, yeah. it's a good looking dude yeah yeah right but, but adam driver is not he's he's not yeah. on my short list right not even on my long list not on my long list <laughs> nope yeah <laughs> no women adore him they just they oh, okay. adore him beyond so, all right. reason so he's uh, uh a thousand panties have dropped simultaneously a, a, million, a million a million a million millions million. yes. yeah so is he crying that, out that crying out at hot, once is he that <laughs> ugly hot that you talk about Exactly. That that was ugly handsome. Exactly. Yes. Ugly handsome. The other yeah. book, ugly handsome. There you go. Okay. That. Yeah. And, and I think that's part of the fascination is like he has a face that because I look at him, I'm like, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch at least is symmetrical. Like you're not even <laughs> symmetrical, dude. Like what's yeah. the what, what's going on? What are you doing? But I think it's like two kinds of fascination going on at once with him. It's the fascination we have with really good looking people happening at the same time we have the fascination with deformed people. And it's just like it's blinking in and out, in and out like a strobe light, and that's where that's where it comes from. Plus, the guy's built like a Sasquatch, so like that. There's that too. So. Yeah. When he took his like shirtless Kylo Ren, I was like, I was like, what? Like, why <laughs> are right. why is that a thing? And he's all right. pasty and hairless <laughs> and right. Oh. right. Right. So before I came on the show, I went and checked on um, Archive of Our Own, which is the biggest fan fiction repository. And it's run for women, by women. I'm not going to say for women necessarily because I don't I don't know what how everybody identifies. Sure, but sure. It's it's a nonprofit and it's started as just to I think there's like two million stories up now. You can't even you have to wait to join. They issue two thousand. Uh, what is it? Um, invitations a day. And you're on a waiting list. So when I joined, I had to wait a week. They had to go through, what is it, 10,000 people who wanted to join before they got to me on the list. Wow. So it, a, AO3.com, archive of our own. Another another huge thing that's like, you know, um, obvious to female fandom that they all know about, but men just don't know about. And it's just this endless compendium of fan fiction, slash fiction, everything. So I checked before I got here. There were 13,000 stories about Ray and Kylo Ren together. <laughs> in various levels of explicitness wow. there were but yeah but here's the thing there were twenty thousand about kylo ren and general hux so that's the more popular pairing that's the but, one they really want to see 
And this this uh, website is mainly women, or I am assuming, considering that most of fan fiction is the majority of fan fiction is women. I'm not going to say that it's all right, right. But I think it was so. You know the what is it? You know, archive of our own. It's based on that Virginia Woolf thing of a room of your own, like somewhere. Mm-hmm. Her famous essay about how women writers just need to be somewhere. So so the very title of it is kind of a play on it. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's all women self sustaining this this fan archive well i mean come on now don't care maybe uh what's a, it's what's that guy's name is it richard tingle is that it uh yeah, yeah. He's in there. <laughs> exactly. he could be in there writing some sure, stuff absolutely absolutely sure. i'm a fan you know, yeah so banged no, in the yeah, no, my butts kylo ren right. in my butt <laughs> right. banged in the butt by kylo ren general huck it's fan fiction right. nice <laughs> nice so what is all right, so, so real quick um, let's let's talk about that then i want to jump uh, we have we had a series mm-hmm. of things we wanted to talk about well let's jump ahead yeah uh, Mike, uh, to the sure. Kylo Gate, since since this is a nice segue. Yes. What is Kylo Gate? What what do you mean yeah. by Kylo Gate? All right. Well, let's consider the character of Kylo Ren first of all. Okay. He uh, grew up parents constantly squabbling. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, sent away to his uncle's private school. Ended up murdering all of his classmates. Fell under the sway of an evil general who shaped him into a, a dark lord. Uh, killed his father, really likes this girl, but has force choked her and paralyzed her and kidnapped her and mind raped her, but also swept her up like a bride and tried to convince her to go out with him by telling her that she's nothing. Sounds but like every relationship still, I've she ever can had. Still <laughs> kick his, <laughs> but she exactly. can still she kick his ass. ass. She can still kick his ass, yes. Right. So, so the Kylo gate is there's there's really two sides of the fandom and it's probably very much similar to what's going on, went on with the Fifty Shades of Grey. The one side of it is you can't be serious. You have a crush on this guy. He's obviously an emotional abuser. He's he's a fucking hot mess. If you write these kind of stories, you're either brainwashed or you're, you know, furthering rape culture. The other side of it is, no, you don't see the gentle soul beneath him. Uh, you know, besides, I'm a big girl and I can like anything that I want. What do you care if I'm into rape fantasies? He puts the hot and hot mess. You know, I love you, Kylo, forever and ever. So that and these these two sides are squabbling with each other constantly. You can't, and I, I, in Instagram, there's a lot of, you know, that's the other thing. I'm talking just about the slash fiction, but the fan art is a whole nother level of pornographic uh, beyond all the capacity. So that, that's, you want to add on like the 13,000 stories just on AO3. There's plenty more fan fiction archives, plus the 20,000 of, with Hux. Plus, you want to add in Wattpad, which is the other reading writing platform that um, that's also. So let's double that and then add on to it all the art that's on uh, Instagram and Tumblr and um, which is which is uh, conveniently parked at DeviantArt. So that's just going to be your your, all your clearinghouse. So mom, just go to (laughs) DeviantArt.com. That's what you'll want to be searching. And fall down a rabbit hole. I don't think my mother's ever been told about it. (laughs) Um, my mom listens to the show, and she's a cool okay. person, and she loves all this good, stuff. Good. Okay. You don't think I'm not even being patronizing. Right. So I'm like, Mom, right, go right. to DeviantArt.com and just go to town. Have fun with that. What, whatever you're into, somebody yeah. will have it, It's you know, there. Someone already thought of it. It's it's somebody sad. It's like there's no yeah. – it, right. it, it, you really have to go far yep. to yep. find something yep. someone hasn't thought of. Yeah. Yep, yep. So. So I forget what I was. I got distracted by talking about Kylo Ren porn. But what I forget <laughs> what were we talking about at the beginning? Oh, we're just of talking, the... We were just talking about Kylo Gate and just the, yeah, and, yeah. And so, so let me let me ask you this then. So, so that feeds into something, um, mm-hmm. and it, it's this is so perfect. This timing of this, we just mm-hmm. did a an interview for for Game School. We we did an episode with. Um, with uh, James Desborough about his game mm-hmm. uh, based on the Gore novels by uh, John mm-hmm. Norman. Are you, are you familiar yeah. with that? I am. I so, am in the Gorean relationships. Yeah. Yeah, and we talked about you know like gaming, uh, the, the the issue in the gaming community because mm-hmm. gaming community is really sensitive to this sort of thing as well. You know the, the mm-hmm. rape culture and all that kind of stuff, and, and right, I get right. it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it really boils down to there are people that genuinely love this and they genuinely yeah. do have things like rape fantasies mm-hmm. and they are mm-hmm. genuinely mm-hmm. into dominance and submissive uh, yep. behaviors. Yep. And I, I, there's a part of me that feels like the, you know, I, I believe that the people who are, who are railing against this come from a good place. I think mm-hmm. that they, they want people to be healthy and they, and all that kind of stuff. But right. at the same time, I feel like they're trying to control what people desire and what they want to say and how they want to express themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing. AO3, Archive of Our Own, has always been on the side of uh, creators 
and they mm -hmm. have legal counsel and anybody i think like a couple creators like the riverdale the archie people have come down pretty hard on fan fiction i know ann rice has said she doesn't want mm -hmm. anybody writing fan fiction with their characters AO3's legal counsel has always stepped up to defend the writer and their yeah. First Amendment rights to keep it. Well, Even when the other controversy in fan fiction, if you're writing Harry Potter slash, all the characters are underage. Mm -hmm. And AO3 has always come down to this is fiction and this is protected by the First Amendment. So, yeah, I think I think there is, speaking as a writer who writes about sexuality and, um, you know, people with conflicted or confusing sexualities, or especially this novel Scarstruck, which is taking place in a time where the word rape culture isn't even thought about and it, it is still a very much a sexist society a homophobic society right. I, I think the key part of the rape fantasy is the fantasy part of it you know that that the the nature of fantasy is that it is with your consent you know and yeah the, um what was i gonna say so the when i was writing i still write romance and i still write slash fiction myself they drew it there's discussion a distinction between rape and a forced seduction. And mm -hmm. I think that is a key distinction that people say, I won't write rape stories. And there, there's plenty of them on AO3, you know, that's, and that's people's deal. That's fine. You can read it, you can write it. But, but the forced seduction is a very different animal. And now, I, where, I think that's where, a key distinction. Where do you, where do you uh, sit on hentai? <laughs> Uh, I, I sit on it like this. Yes. <laughs> Which side of the tentacle are you on? Right, right, exactly. Um, I, I am, I will always be on the side of, if if it comes out of, you know, a pen or a paintbrush or, or something, I'm on the side of it being uh, an art, you know, ars gratia artist. An artist can do whatever they want. When you start to involve people, when you start to involve actors, then I'm a little more eh, about it. I right. used to, one of my previous jobs, I worked for a company that did the, um, you know, like when you're looking through the on-screen guide and your TV and it's got a short description of what the movie's about. So I wrote those descriptions. You know, I summed up movie plots in 29 characters, 59 characters, 99 characters, 500 characters. So, you, you know, somebody has to write them. You were doing yeah. Twitter for movies before Twitter. Exactly. Came out. Exactly. Okay. So so if, if you've yeah. watched TV, you have read my writing. So right. so but as I got there, a larger and larger percentage of what I was being asked to write was adult movies. And when it started coming down the pike, my my thing, they were easy to write to. It was interesting because there were a handful of words you couldn't use, but then you could get creative with some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. Like you could you couldn't say you couldn't say Oriental, you couldn't say yellow, you could say Asian, you could say geisha, you could say you know, it was like mm -hmm. a whole you couldn't say gangsta with an A, but you could say Nubian or you could you know, it was yeah. So working within that it was like writing these little pornographic haikus of what people were doing or what and, <laughs> and it was you know it was it was fun in a little sense but as it got to be 30 percent of my workload and the titles that were coming through the descriptions were supplied by the companies and it was a lot of like smashed and banged and ripped and destroyed and i'm like the guys down the in the quarters down there writing the boxing sports descriptions aren't using these words and there's a lot of stuff about like normalizing incest of like i'm getting it on with my stepdaughter we know it's not your stepdaughter we can just right. pretend it's your stepdaughter and you know i went into that job as a you know first amendment civil libertarian and i left it just thinking oh my god this is a cesspool this is so this is not <laughs> this, this is not the promise of, yeah exactly this is not the promise of deep throat or the the libertarian society and the free expression this is just some other bad sick animal that just right. please don't learn about sex from porn just please or yeah, or don't. make it better make some right. better kind of porn that you can learn from so having that been my experience but you know being and this is somebody speaking who's you know a large portion of my writing now published but for a long period unpublished is about sex and about human sexuality so if i am like get me some eye bleach then then we have a problem <laughs> well <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to lie. I, I think I learned a little bit about sex uh, from reading Starstruck, even though I was really? uh, reading it from a um, from a computer uh, wow, voice. Wow. <laughs> uh, you know, you you know, you pick up a thing or two about what. Well, what did you? Uh, what did you learn? What did you learn? I, I learned that uh, <clears throat> as difficult as it was for me to uh, sort of not when when I say difficult, how I got through. Okay, mm -hmm, the. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the scenes in the beginning where it was just a male mm -hmm. on a male. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking to myself, oh, not too different from a female, you know, mm -hmm. and these, what was interesting is the same exact thing that got me through it was what mm -hmm. got 
main character through it later when he, not to give mm. spoiler alert, but he, right, you know, right. ends up having sex with a female, and he, right, right. he, he employed exactly what I employed. So oh, that's interesting. That's yeah, interesting. It, wow, that's really wild. Yeah, maybe yeah. I just learned a lot about myself and my right. sexuality. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what that's what I thought of in this book, you know, because. In writing this, I, I thought of it as like a musical, you know, because there's a musical, you have a little bit of plot, and then you have a song, and a little mm. plot, and a song. And I treated all the sex scenes like that. But the thing about the sex scenes in this book is that they're all about something. Mm -hmm. that like, like the way that a song in a musical, it illustrates a character's internal state or, you know, sort of illuminates where they are in their journey. And, and I made sure that each of those, they couldn't just, you know, drop trow and bone each other just out of nowhere. For this to make sense in a novel, it had to be, they had to be fucking about something every time. So I'm glad to hear that it, it was having that kind of connection and, with you. Or and I, I get, I got that from, from mm -hmm. even not even hearing you say it, but it was like, mm -hmm. okay, so this, in, in a way, the, the sex that he was having in the beginning was a state of who he was then. And he's, mm -hmm. he's yeah. you know, there's mm -hmm. a, I guess, in, in essence, and we don't want to give too much away, obviously. Right. But there's, mm -hmm. he sort of goes through a transition mid, you know, uh, yeah. mid, uh, you know, a third of the way through the book. And, right. um, right. and it's interesting because I, the transition he takes, you would think I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, as a straight mm -hmm. male and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, right. I found myself going, what are wow. you? Are you are You're you betraying uh, yourself, yeah. man? Right. But, you know, right. but not really, because then you right. learn again. I don't. I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, I don't go too much. There's... Don't get too much. Yeah, yeah. Well, I should. I should just sum up. So what the what the book is about for yes. people who haven't read Let's it is that. it yeah. takes place in 1950s Hollywood. It's a Ron Dash is a gay actor, like a closeted gay actor, sort of a Rock Hudson type. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. His career is falling apart after he's been caught in a questionable sex party, and his manager puts him into what's what was called then a lavender marriage, a very common occurrence where mm -hmm. gay stars were sort of shuttled into marrying their secretary or whatever. He marries, he's made to marry this uh, alcoholic communist starlet named Lana Arlo in this sort of uh, like, uh, you know, two kingdoms marrying their children to each other. Their agents have brokered this deal to try to save both of their careers. But he's really secretly in love with this Mexican busboy that he meets. And I'm not, that's not giving anything away because you meet him in the opening thing. And, and the novel is about the time period, about him trying to, trying to make sense of who he is, about, you know, going past his boundaries in a lot of different ways. So that's basically it. If there's a lot more, and I want to say that I, and I have, this is the first real erotica that I've read, mm. to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, but too. I, I've heard a lot. Of, of different people <laughs> dis discussing it and stuff. There yeah, is a yeah. lot of psychology. So I, I mean, it's like I seriously want to want to just give you wow, props you. because you. you really like you. And, and this is why I think that um, you're getting a lot of praise for this is because you are taking what is just considered to be just that's ah, just trashy novels. Like, you know, you think yeah. you're a Harlequin romance. Right, this right. is not a Harlequin romance. Like, I seriously yeah. I would. <laughs> I say yeah, dude, like I want to say I would I let my mother say... read this. I would yeah. seriously like tell my mother yeah. read this because there's a lot wow. of psychology involved. She's OK yeah. with the whole, you know, all the, the sexuality yeah. aspects. Mm -hmm. But you know what, yeah. Mike, I, I wanted to say that that I felt um, that the, the sex scenes like the sex scene that I, that I read about, the, the, the one that happens early on, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't any more sexual than it needed to be to get across the message mm -hmm. of the story. Like it wasn't honestly, mm -hmm. I mean, it. Mike, I don't know if you're going to agree with me, but it didn't really seem all that overt, really. I mean, it was no more than you would, I don't know, it's kind of like an R-rated movie that wasn't too I mean, crazy. Yeah. Maybe a little, yeah. like, hard R, but it, yeah. but, it, but it wasn't super graphic. And there was just so much, like you said, so much in his head that he's thinking about while this is going on. And, oh. and like, just the... the I don't know the journey that he's going through during this isn't like oh yeah I'm getting laid blah 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 no there's a whole mm -hmm. like there are there are rats running around in his head that he he has got a <laughs> lot going on in there while this yeah. is going on and it's keeping you entertained on on different levels I, I don't know I like I, I was yeah, like, man that's awesome. indeed that's awesome. and consider yeah. the fact that if you were to consider Alexa reading it to you though <laughs> uh, that put a different well, here, spin on it for me here let me let me re let me read some of it as as Alexa so um, sure. no no um, no no read it as you please <laughs> read it as me okay I can get Alexa all right. anytime all right let's see oh, all right so I'll just I'll just start up with he he in this opening we'll start with the opening chapter where he has discovered he uh, Ron is drinking the afternoon away because he thinks his career is over he's been found at the sex party and then he opens the 
elevator and there's this beautiful Mexican elevator operator he's in love with and he convinces him to come back with him. He says, uh, and you still didn't mind sharing an elevator with me, he murmured, the words jouncing the cigarette between his lips. Sharing an elevator with you was the highlight of my day, sir. The words tumbled out, too quick and too eager, and he knew it. The boy flushed and bit his lower lip. Ron knew now. This wasn't starstruck. Starstruck was gee whiz and looky here and ma take a Kodak. He could see it in eyes gone suddenly wide as they flapped fanning pages of autograph books in his face. You are everything I am lacking, starstruck said. I never knew the name for the dead gray hole inside me, but I know you have the cure. The boy stood, shoulders hunched like a cowed hound dog in his white jacket, a living, breathing surrender flag. Tear a piece of off, tear off a piece of me, his posture screamed. Ron took a step forward. The boy inhaled sharply. Take off that stupid hat, said Ron. The boy snatched it off his head and ran his fingers through his brill creamed bangs. What's your name? Flacco. Softly, spoken down into the carpet. I don't like it. Well, this is Hollywood, said Ron. He turned the key in the lock. You can be whoever you want to be. He put his hand on the boy's chest, one meaty palm square on his sternum, and you can start being him right now. He gave the boy a shove through the open door. The boy stumbled to keep his footing, and the edge of the mattress kicked into the back of his knees. He sat down hard. You read the article? said Ron. Yeah, said the boy, half breathless. Ron raised his hand and struck, smack against the boy's cheek like a whip crack of thunder. The boy's head snapped to the left. The long cafe con leche underbelly of his neck stretched out for one languid moment. The print of Ron's hand welled strawberry on his cheek. Ron clenched his tingling palm and waited. This is where they chicken out, he thought. They raise their hand to their cheek to touch what they can't quite believe. They get their coat and well I never and trundled out the door. The boy's hand stayed at his sides, mouth open, chest heaving, fingers clawing to the bedspread like a cat in heat. Ron grabbed him by the hair and yanked his head back. You know what you're in for? He hissed. I read the article, the boy gulped. His throat was dry and the lump tenting his pants was hard. They print lies, said Ron. He leaned in close enough to kiss. Lies sell magazines. Lies let housewives cluck their tongues over how sick they are. Sick we are. I hope they're not lies, breathed the boy. His mouth parted like a peach torn in half and Ron took the bait. He crushed his mouth over girl's sweet lips and tasted coconut sun lotion and toothpaste and virginity in the slippery twitch of his startled tongue. The unspoiled taste made him greedy. When the boy tried to come up for air, Ron bit hard on his bottom lip instead. A little yelp escaped the boy's throat and smothered into a moan. The wet nail tang of blood salted his kiss. Take it off, said Ron. We'll leave it there. That's nice. not the spiciest part. We'll leave it there. Yeah. Right. Nice. It, it definitely leads into more spice. Yeah. But yeah. see, I love I love the, the, the language that you use. I just, oh my God. I, I'm like I'm like not worthy because it's you know because I did some writing. I did NaNoWriMo and I, I wrote fifty thousand words. Did yeah. you do it? See, I've yeah. never been able to do that. So congratulations to you. Yeah. This this book yeah. took twelve years to write. Are you kidding me? Fifty thousand okay. words in one month is quite an accomplishment. So so big up on you. All right. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. I am going to go back through and enrich the language because uh, you mm -hmm. know I was burning through it and I was getting the story like th this happens, then this happens, and this happens, uh, and there was some dialogue and stuff in there. But I need to go back and like you know and and like enrich and and um, mm -hmm. one of the things World I got to do. Yeah, well, the world I got. See now, the world building I got. The world I'd already had, because uh, it's based off of role playing game stuff that I'm doing. But oh, okay. Um, but one of the things that I found that that was difficult to do when you're writing really fast was to make sure that everyone has their own voice, so that when dialogue comes out of one character's mouth, it doesn't sound right. like any other character like they have their own they have their own way. and mike you know like when i did the uh the the, the well it's a, it's a long short story but the, the short story i did that we mm -hmm. did a live reading for i actually took a lot of time with that and went through and made sure that happened and i think you'll mm -hmm. notice that every character had their own but they were they were really when they talked mm -hmm. you almost didn't have to say who it was you knew sure. who it was by the words that came out of their mouth it's hard to do it's really hard mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, I, so I want to ask you something about this. Was I, I'm gonna I'm gonna read a quote from you on your on your web page. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. On fa it's a Facebook post, and mm -hmm. I I love this. It says every shocking, racist, sexist, misanthropic, violent, and horrifying thing I have ever written has been in the service of making a bigger point about the sedu sedu seductiveness of language of people. Or I'm sorry. God damn it. Of power, human arrogance, pain, vulnerability, and the opportunity for redemption. 
That's what I meant. That's what it means to own what you create, not to stand blindly behind every stupid impulse, but to know in your conscience and your soul that what you send out into the world is invested with a piece of your heart. And despite its surface brutality, you hope to make the world a better with it, not worse. Yeah. That's, yep. that's fucking brilliant, man. Awesome. That is fucking brilliant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's just, go ahead. What were you going to say? I don't know. I, I, um, no, speak to this first because I was going to refer yeah. someone to read something else of yours in case they didn't yeah, want to, yeah. if there's anyone who didn't, for whatever reason, want right. to read erotica. So go ahead. Right. Well, this whole thing was prompted by, I, I won't get too much into it, but I, I, um, the writing scene, the bizarro scene that I was connected to when I wrote those first two books they have a sort of an annual conference every year. Something happened this conference that everybody was like, well, what, what the fuck was that? And so there was a big lot of blowback. So after hearing about what had happened, you know, again, it's not worth repeating, but uh, I wrote that in response to that. And I think that's, there's a lot of talk about, you know, the First Amendment and artists' rights and artists got to do everything. And that's, that, that's, that's great. That's correct. You know, we have, the, we have that right. It's, it's a wonderful freedom, but it's also a precious freedom. And so the question of once you have that freedom, what do you do with it? Do you, do you, you know, just kind of poison the world and say, well, I did it, so step back, you know, yeah. suck it up, or, or do you say, well, there's if if I'm using these tools, then am am I still working towards a bigger goal of people understanding themselves or understanding what it's like to be alive or to be flawed or to, you know, look hard at themselves and find a place where they can forgive themselves? And um, so can I, I out myself key. on something? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So uh, earlier, when I first started reading the book, I first like started reading um, this morning. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I, I got up and I, cause it was forever for me futzing with it, getting it to work. Right, right, so right. I got up, started reading it. Uh, and you know, I'm like, four chapters in mm -hmm. and i'm like oh you know all i can think is you know i'm i'm such a victim of the uh social justice warrior oh, you know politically yeah, correct yeah. Mm -hmm. and everything and it's just like right. because he, now now pete and i differ on this a little bit i mm -hmm. i just i don't want to offend anyone but i right. believe in rights i believe in yeah and yeah. i i enjoy you know right. things i enjoy even being politically incorrect but i don't right. never I, I am very careful to not want to offend anyone and right. then i'm like oh pete i don't know man have you read this yeah. he's like well i don't know i read a little bit why i was like oh i don't know now <laughs> yeah. saying uh -huh. that because before i understood your purpose and how you were doing it and i didn't find i didn't really get into it until i got into like maybe i'd say a third of the way into the book i'm realizing realizing oh it's like the whole thing is the art and you can't yeah. you can't point at one little thing you you mm -hmm. can't have a full understanding of 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 all of what this this character is going through and what what you the, the message ultimately you're trying to, to portray and and everything mm -hmm. and, unless you have in a, you have to have these other brush strokes these other colors in there yeah. you can't take mm -hmm. away colors yeah, um, yeah, exactly. And, and so I, I'm just I'm I'm adding myself because I was like, oh, I don't know. Ugh. Well, I mean, I think I think that's a good position to be. I want to not make people. My first two books, I wanted to make people uncomfortable, but I was a different person. That I had I had different goals as a writer. And I really wanted to confront and and engage. And um, I don't I don't want to make people uncomfortable so much as I want to want to stretch. I think I want to take them to to gears in their bicycle that they don't know that they have. Right. They actually do, you know, but I just want to say like, no, you do have, you do have 10 speeds, you know? And um, I think that of all people, I heard Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean did a impassioned defense of some kind of hate speech law. Did you see that? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, it's beautiful. Yeah, of him, beautiful. Of him saying, so it's the British law about you cannot uh, criticize race or religion. And he said, well, okay, race, a person has no control over, and it's really an arbitrary biological distinction. So I agree with that. But a religion, however, is a human idea. And to say that no human idea is exempt from discussion that may end up offending somebody in the service of truth or understanding is absurd. Mm. So I'm not I'm not holy. All religions should be criticized as any other human idea should be criticized mm -hmm. and, and discussed and without yeah. fear of going to you know step on somebody's toes. I said, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. So, without I mean, somebody say, calling a national emergency. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, and and to be I mean, fair, that, and to be fair, even criticize non-religion because I'm a non-religious right. person, right? Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. and I'm yep. I'm fine. Criticize criticize my right. non-belief or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Let's have a that, talk. That's fine because yeah. if I, if my if if my belief system cannot stand up to criticism, 
doesn't that say something about my belief system? Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. I mean, as a as a writer, I'm a pretty. Uh, I I have my frustration with I I'm interested in social justice, but I have frustration with the social justice movement. It's you know without getting too into that. Basic at my core, I'm a contrarian. I always want to do what people say that I can't do, and I just can't help myself. That's I even, why we love you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a little like, bit of that right, right here. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, well, that's why you keep having me on the show. So yes, but I, I don't know if you saw on Instagram, I drew up a Violet Lavoie book bingo of, you know, if you read one of my books, then you can fill in the squares of things like fire, suicide attempt, eating disorder, I need to look that up, Ooh, like, right. stop talking about stuff from the 80s. And um, I was talking with my publisher about it. And I said, yeah, after I, I'm working on one more novel with him, and then I think I'm gonna step back and kind of regroup for a little bit, because these past three books have taken a lot out of me. And I said, I find myself that I'm, I'm writing the same book and the same themes all over again. He's like, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. You know, every author has that. They all, you know, all of Kurt Vonnegut books, all of Thomas Pynchon's books, they all, they're all dealing with the same themes. It's okay to go back to them. I was like, no, cause I, it's like, I'm telling me you have to write about these things. I'm like, fuck you, Violet. I don't have to write about anything. I'll write, I'll write what <laughs> I feel like You can try it to right. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, yeah, that's I get I get mad at myself sometimes too, and I'm like, God damn it, Pete, you don't have to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So so let's yeah. you know what let let's let's talk a little bit about some of this fan fiction you've been writing because you said you love it so yeah. much, uh, mm -hmm, Mike. Mm -hmm. You were uh, I I took me a little digging. Okay, so I was um I was, I was kind of hoping there'd be like a link on your website to it maybe, but I didn't. No, I, actually, how to go digging? Write, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you did better than I did. I could not find it. Yeah, I, I, found it, I write yeah. it anonymously. I write it anonymously okay. so I can write about all kinds of things that so even are too far out. No, no, you can you can out me. That's fine. Okay, you know, okay, but, okay. But, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, yeah. so here's here's some of the stuff I found. Mike, you were asking like like what? And, and, and Violet, please chime in. All right. So yeah. then there's there's a lot of like Star Wars stuff. You're a big Star Wars fan, I can see. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. There's one called "The Child Is Father of the Man," and the and the yes, quote I'm for pulling it, it up right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. go ahead. Obi Wan inadvertently triggers a memory, hinting at Anakin's trauma, and learns he's not ready for how his Padawan has transmuted pain into pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you like me to read some of that too? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's well, skip to uh, let's skip to the the dangerous part. Let's see. Hold on. I'll view it as a reader. So this is all on the Wattpad app, by the way, which I like a lot, but it's it's a good one if you want to write on the train or, or something like that. Let's uh uh no, let's go to let's go to part two. Part two is the better one. So so they've had a fight and and Anakin says, What were you trying to do to me? he asked. His voice was soft and low and eerily calm. Dark eyes shone glassily with some surge of unnatural serenity. You had something planned? Get me sick? Tire me out? He pressed his face up to Obi-Wan's, teeth bared. A fresh sizzle rose up under Obi-Wan's chin. While my back was turned? Obi-Wan made his voice as calm and textureless as possible. Anakin put the weapon down. Don't try that on me! A new, more frightening surge of anger twisted the boy's feature. I'm not some fucking sand person who just got off the last transport. What do you take me for? Obi-Wan hadn't tried a mind trick. The force of his Padawan's delusion now frightened him. All of Yoda's warnings about the boys suddenly fell into formation in his frantic mind as he scrambled for a plan of action. He could kill the boy. His own lightsaber was still at his belt. Without even touching it, he could ignite it, toss it in a telekinetic arc so the moment of ignition would cleave the boy into two char-edged halves. If that was too distasteful, he could shove him across the room. He could do all these things. Let me skip ahead just a bit. And suddenly, the answer was clear. Anakin dropped to his knees, leaning over Obi-Wan, blade still to his neck, but now with a confused curiosity, a child following an experiment all the way through, but now uncertain of the outcome. His face softened. His Padawan braid dropped from behind his shoulder. Its tip swung against the blade and instantly vaporized into a burst of sharp black smoke. The cauterized end brushed a lazy arc against Obi-Wan's cheek, and Obi-Wan didn't flinch. Do what you will, he said. And I have to skip ahead a little bit to really get to the part that I want to talk about. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Obi-Wan reached to touch his wrist, but the boy's mouth was already upon him. Fingers dug into the hair at the nape of his neck and crested the soft spot behind his ears as Anakin seized him, pressed him closer, pushing his tongue against his, the open plush of his mouth, the voluptuous infinite cavern that hummed with unsacred energy. He's, they never kissed me, words whispered hot into Obi-Wan's mouth. Never. Anakin's thumb traced the jugular hollows of Obi-Wan's neck. His touch was not light. 
One of them choked me. He got behind me and squeezed until I blacked out. His thumbs dragged trenches in Obi-Wan's neck with uncomfortable pressure. I could do that to you. Obi-Wan swallowed hard. His Adam's apple bobbed under Anakin's hard thumbs. You could. All right, uh, let's see. And that's what you're going to do, Anakin scooted his hips up to Obi-Wan's collarbone, shoulders pinned under the hard, flat bone of his kneeling calves. Anakin, he began, no, but the no choked on a mouthful of hard flesh as Anakin shoved his cock into his mouth, bouncing hard against the soft, gagging point at the roof of Obi-Wan's mouth. Anakin's hand grabbed a handful of Obi-Wan's hair. Are <laughs> you having some intestinal distress there, Peter? No, I love right? it. This he is grabbed a handful awesome. of Obi-Wan's hair and yanked his face close as Obi-Wan's mouth rebelled, involuntarily gagging as Anakin's cock crested over the deep back of his throat with choking, violating thrusts. And, and uh, his, the explosion was almost instantaneous. Obi-Wan gagged and panicked with the drowning man's reflex, coughing up a bitter, salty mouthful, his jaws nearly snapping shut in reflex on Anakin's cock. He had come deep enough to sting the delicate passages of Obi-Wan's nose with his corrosive cum. The back of his neck stung as if he'd been hit with a brick. He lay there naked, gasping, trying to make sense of what happened, trying to ignore the still-thumping blood in his own cock. Aren't, aren't, the words had to write themselves in Obi-Wan's flummoxed brain. Aren't you going to do something to me? No, said Anakin. He stepped out of the room, then paused and turned back for a moment. But I can, if I want to. He crossed the threshold and disappeared. Anakin is such an asshole. Leave a man <laughs> hanging like that. <laughs> All right, I must have heard something wrong because at some point something got uh, just the tip got cut off, and I was thinking <laughs> I was scared for somebody. So uh, I must have read that wrong. I mean, I'm gonna. Right. Yeah. So, that's so awesome. you did. You found me. So that and that's cool. That's fine. Ooh. I'm um I'm fine to be. You know, it's it's a. It's a quasi pseudonym, you know. The people that know me know me, so what is it going to yeah. do? But right, but right. I write about much much darker recesses of human sexuality and anonymously than I do in my other print work. So. All right, so so Violet, one of our one of our, our regular listeners, and she's a good friend of ours, Spence. Uh -huh. She uh, she she just commented in the in the room. She said, "Violet, you are my hero. This is the slash fic I wanted." So you got another reader, yay! Oh, right. yeah, yeah. Well, awesome. you can thank you so much. You can my my handle. I'll give it away. I'm Void Vesper. I'm a real fan of the the letter V. So Void Vesper on Wattpad and Ao3. You can find me. So. There you go, Spence. Check it yeah. out. She's got, got quite a few things <laughs> in there. You. Looks good. Thank yeah. You, um. All right. Okay. So so well, let's can I, uh, I just stay I on time, Mike. To touch on something um mm -hmm. real quick and i'm gonna drop this into the um chat room if anyone wanted to go see it but if anyone is interested if anyone is like thinking hey listen that's great you know it's all good for you know you're talking about the you know the pineases and, and all that kind of stuff <laughs> but it's just not my thing I, you know i'm just uh -huh. clear if you want to know what um some of the uh stylings of um violet's writing is um, I'm dropping into the chat. I dropped in a link to um, – it is basically a, lo uh, a love letter from, from her to Jughead. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and explaining this to you um, at uh, – where was it again? It was at – well, you're, you're a continuing um, contributor at RogerEbert.com, Roger correct? Com. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. – um, but this particular one I I've, I've read all the way through, and oh, I'm not going to ruin it. I okay. Because it had it, – the, the ending, just the last you know paragraph was like, Oh, yeah. So, um, and yeah. and Violet, yeah. you are not alone. My my ten year old daughter loves Jughead. She oh, has geez. a South Side Serpent's jacket she got for oh. Christmas, and she's got the she's got the Jughead hat. So oh. like the like the Nick Cat yeah. that he wears. Yeah, she she's got a little crush on Jughead. I swear, I, I I don't blame her at all. You know, when I saw that, she, it's funny. I started. I had a, a Patreon for about a hot minute before it, I just realized it wasn't going to work, but I thought one of the premiums I could do was have a slash fiction club where, you know, every month I'd send you a new story. So I thought I can't be sending Anakin Obi-Wan stories every month. I got to, you know, expand this to other fandoms. And on a whim, I said, well, let's watch Riverdale. And oh my God, I, 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 I wrote that article. I pitched it to my editor at rogerebert.com because I said, I really do feel like I'm in love. I'm having the exact same chemical explosions in my brain it's not like oh i like this show he's so cute like like i literally do feel like i had a, i had a great first date and i woke up the next morning and the birds are singing like i'm mm -hmm. i'm in love with, and, I, and i'm hearing uh, other people i wrote it a um there's a great underground newspaper here in philly called the philadelphia secret admirer where i'm a contributor and i read that and people came up afterwards and said i want you to know quite seriously i also love jughead 
like love him you know and i said yeah i i understand completely so 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 kylo ren and jughead are kind of the poles of like my my imaginary fantasy romantic life mm. at this point right now so. but to find out uh some of the 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 secret um uh, ending to the to the article which was nice <laughs> to find out uh what what how she turned certain aspects of that into reality uh you have to read the article that's all okay. i'm gonna say all right so well, here's um, the thing. But I appreciated yeah, it. Yep. It was okay. Nice. Good. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, here's the thing about this Jughead versus Kylo is that, you know, the the saying is, you know, women three weeks out of the year they want Mr. Nice Guy. Three three weeks out of the month they want Mr. Nice Guy, and then for one week out of the month they want Mr. Fuck You Twice Guy. And then mm -hmm. the thing is like, the Kylo is Mr. Fuck You Twice. He thinks he's Mr. Fuck You Twice Guy. He's actually Mr. Nice Guy. Jughead, you think he's Mr. Nice Guy. He's actually Mr. Fuck You Twice Guy. That's the secret nice. of both. Mm. So, nice. One's a North Pole, one's a South Pole. Exactly, exactly. Yep. And, you, yep. and you're there right in the middle with him. Right. Right? <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you, know, you know who I'm yeah. kind of smitten with? And and I, I had no idea who she was. And the movie was terrible. Uh, the, the girl from Valerian, Cara Delevingne. Oh yeah, she's great. She's great. She, she is. She's super cute, and she's got these like yeah. I don't know. She's got these like m like fucking mm -hmm. magic eyebrows. They're just right. they're, they're like these. <laughs> the that's, that's my new band name, the Magic Eyebrows of Cara <laughs> Delevingne. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But she is. Uh, yeah. She's and she's got. She's really. In, she's got this like, intense face. I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but she's. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm kind of smitten with her myself. Yeah, but yeah, she's pretty great. Yeah. So this always sucks because now we're running so low on time. Mm -hmm. that because uh, we have to get to our game so right. is yes. there pete is there one is there any other last questions you wanted to hit up just one run yeah, real quick we, uh, dude, we hit we hit lightning most round. Of this. i think it's been pretty good um uh but I, i'd like uh go ahead and mention you're going to be at aw what's awp that's uh that god what does that stand for i should know that's the biggest writers conference for writers publishers everything that's the big deal you know that's that's for all small presses and publishers and everything so i'm going to be there with my press Kingshot Press, which is a, a small press in Portland, Oregon, that puts out fabulous books. If you like my work, you're going to love my classmates at Kingshot. So check kingshotpress.com. They're, they're an amazing roster of artists. The, um, the owners take real care in picking people and nurturing talent and everything. Anyway, I'll be there reading with uh, a whole bunch of other Kingshot writers, and I'm looking forward to seeing people. I haven't decided yet. I think when people buy Scarstruck, I think I might light a cigarette and burn the book for them. I haven't decided no, yet. Oh, yes! <laughs> Oh, before, yes. somebody, before somebody comes over and says you can't smoke inside the civic center but, you, but i'll try <laughs> to get right. away with it before so so come buy one early if you want that right. oh. <laughs> that's mm. awesome yeah. so yeah, all right awesome. I, I am gonna i have one question and mm -hmm. uh actually this was one that pete i think had added to the list and i think it's it's a really good one um mm -hmm. and so you have uh one sentence or less uh will there be a place in the mainstream um, for dominant female romance and/or bisexual romance that will transcend gender, do you think that 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 can make it to the mainstream? Uh, I think I think the day's coming. Nobody saw Fifty Shades of Grey coming, and um, I think I think it's I think it's that it's it's unspoken. It's it's so close beneath the surface that. Uh, all it's gonna it's like the overnight success if you work for 10 years and suddenly it says oh you were an overnight success there's no such thing you know mm -hmm. so i think it's coming right. yeah. right. well awesome. you are not an overnight success but you are climbing the ladder <laughs> one rung you. at a time and we are happy oh, to be a part you. of it so thank uh, you so thank much. you for Always being here, to be here. Totally um so, so we're and, and we're gonna finish our game we're gonna do the game and well actually yeah. do we do the do we do the links first pete or do we gonna do the game yeah do, always do the links first Okay. Actually, can I can I mention too? We're gonna be at Balticon together. I just got this yes! flyer in the mail, and I'm so happy. It look it just yes. cheers me up so much in Philadelphia to get this flyer. So we're gonna be in the live panel in yes. Balticon. We're gonna be doing it together. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So. Nine nine p.m. We do our uh, we do our show every night. Sweet. So we Good. got Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So so come on down. You're gonna join yeah. us. You're gonna join us for Absolutely. one. Oh yeah. Oh awesome. totally. Yeah yeah. We'd love to have you. So, okay. Yeah. Good. I'm Good. I'm psyched. Yeah. We haven't figured oh. out what we're doing yet. We'll, yeah, we'll get, as we get we closer, get, we'll we have a con. We have a con <laughs> right. coming up this weekend. <laughs> right, right. And once we get through that, then we kind of oh, like cool. burn burn yeah, the right. oil for Baltic con. One con at a time. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
All right. right. So uh, everybody needs to go and check out um, uh, everything about Violet Lavoie at, at Violet, V I O L E T, Lavoie, L E V O I T dot com. Um, everything except for uh, her uh, Vesper Vader. Yeah. And um, check out her on Instagram at Violet Lavoie and Twitter at Violet Lavoie. Um, and Lavoie. Did I just say Lavoie? Lavoie. <laughs> yes, you did. Right. Yeah. I, I, I had a bet with Pete yeah. that who was going to yeah. do it. <laughs> and uh, you have to mm. check out uh, kingshotpress.com. Yep. For um, everything related to Violet Lavoie, as well as uh, the fan, fan fiction at mm -hmm. the wattpad.com uh, user <clears throat> forward slash Void Vader. Yeah. Vester, yep. Vesper. Void Vesper. Vesper. God damn it. Boy, reading is hard, Mike. So it hard. is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Glasses are dirty. All right. Let's do it, man. Ready? All right. Yes. I'm ready. Do right, I need Mike, here paper you for this? Nope. No. Nope. You don't. Nope. Okay. You don't need anything. All right, Mike, here you go. All right, everybody. Welcome to Game Time with the Mythwits. I am your host and Game Master, Mike Gafis. And today, we are going to be playing uh, Romancer or Neuromancer. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Well, basically, I'm going to read for you the title of a romance novel. Peter, Violet, and all of our friends playing at home, uh, you are going to have to tell me whether this is currently one of over 900 titles available for sale over at Harlequin.com's Harlequin Romance Series section or the title of a romance novel generated by a neural network. <laughs> Specifically, the Model 1 Fit 3 layer 256 node recurrent neural network. So this isn't just like a this isn't just like a uh, a book generator name, okay? This is literally an AI that they fed all of Harwick and Romances, like over two hundred thousand wow. titles in total. They fed them in, and then they the computer uh, crunched a lot of it, and then was saying, "All right, here's what I got." So uh, is it any better than what a human could come up with? Turns Probably. out, no. No, okay. right. it's just as whatever it is it, that it's just that fantastic yeah. so here we go we're gonna get started uh violet you're gonna go first okay. and here basically i'm gonna give you the title of the book and mm -hmm. the uh author the author has also been um name generated neural, neural um, generated. Okay. well not not neural generated that one was just a not, name generator got it okay oh, okay all right so um the first one is montana mistletoe marriage by pat thayer I'm going to say that's real because there's a gigantic market for Christmas romance. That's huge. So I'm going to err on the side of that. That is a romance. That is correct. That one is an actual real romance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But if you think that uh, I didn't, uh, or I'm sorry, not me, but the neural network didn't think of some Christmas ones, <laughs> you are sadly <laughs> mistaken. <clears throat> so Peter, yours. Oh, oh, fuck me. All right, go ahead. Yours <laughs> is pregnant for rage. By Pam Logan. Pregnant for rage. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I hope this is Neural Network. I so hope this is Neural <laughs> Network. I'm going Neural Network only because that's the most fucked up thing. Oh, God. Pregnant for rage. Well, Are... again, if you're going by it's the most fucked up thing, <laughs> you, it, it's not the best metric. However, in this case, you are correct. Wow, okay. Wow. All right. Whew. What was the oh, author's damn. name again? Pammy Logan. Okay. <laughs> All right. Violet, yours is... Okay. The Consultant Count by Lynn C. Hallett. Hmm. So it's it's kind of a mix of the billionaire genre and the vampire genre. Mm. Which billionaire van that's you know, I'm kind of inspired. Let's see. So what is it? Consultant Count? Yes. The Consultant okay. Count. The Consultant Count. So this is for businesses that want to increase their vampire practices. They hire a vampire consultant or I, I don't know. I'm Could assuming be. it's a vampire count. Okay. If you're trying to get your numbers up, you definitely want to get a count. <laughs> All right. So what uh, what's the author again? Uh, Lynn C. Hallett. You know what? Just just for shits and giggles. Let's say that's a real romance. Let's say. It, sh it should be, but uh, yet yeah. it was uh, generated by, by a neural network, yes. <laughs> All 
right. All right, Peter. I, I can't. I just keep thinking of the count from Sesame Street. That's yeah. that's throwing me. So. One penis. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two lies. Lies. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> All right, Peter. Yours is Christmas with her blackmail by Carly Wilson. Wait, 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 wait. Rewind. Ma and blackmail? Right. right. Yeah. Black what kind of mail is that, Mike? Uh, is that is that the kind you put a Christmas stamp on? Christmas with her blackmail by Carly Wilson. Oh, right. so you're not gonna say Would it, it really matter if it was blackmail or blackmail? Would you vote differently if it was one or the other? Would you really? No. Uh, uh, no, not really. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> Christmas with her blackmail. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is it Mariah Carey? No, um, hold on. Uh, I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to say that has to be Neural Network. It is a Neural Network, and it was <sighs> blackmail. I didn't say blackmail. I okay. said Christmas with her blackmail. That said, I'm violent. So Okay. I'll take, hey, Pat, I'll take the rapist for three. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Violet, yours is baby twins. Parents needed. Uh, By Teresa Carpenter. When I was uh, thinking about doing romance novels, I consulted with someone, not a consultant count, but a consultant writer who she gave me the advice, when in doubt, a secret baby. So I'm going to say this is a real romance. Very good. It is a real book. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yes. Peter. Secret Baby. That's going to be my romance novel. It's going to be called Secret right? Baby. <laughs> Secret Baby. <laughs> that might be your uh, your uh, autobiography. What are you talking yeah, it about? Could be. Oh. Oh. Could be. Uh, okay. Here we go. Peter, yours is Outback Baby Miracle by Melissa James. Yep. That's got to be. Baby. That's got to be. It's that's got to be a romance. Yeah. Yeah. It's an outback baby miracle. So that's yeah. a real romance? That's got to be. It, it, in fact, is a real romance wow. by Melissa wow. James. Yeah. Hey, I'm good at this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, what are you, 50%? Uh, that's pretty good. No, no I'm, I've, I've, chance. I, haven't, oh, no? I haven't gotten one wrong yet. Oh, dear. Wow. Oh, yeah. my. All right. Uh, Violet, mm -hmm. yours is Surgery by the Sea by Bethany O'Hara. Oh, it's romantic. Let's see. Surgery by the sea. It's got to be real. So this is like a, one of those plastic surgery destination vacations kind of things. And I'm, so, um, I'm sorry. I could read the uh, the up. jacket go after up. you give me your answer. Right. Let's see. Uh, I, will, I will say that's a neural network. Surgery by the sea by Bethany O'Hara is, in fact, a neural network. Very good. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yes. Uh, Peter? Yes. The boss's pregnancy proposal. The boss's <laughs> pregnancy proposal by Ray Morgan. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a prequel Christ. to The Boss Gets Slapped. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, sure. Yeah, not that's a novel. That's real. It's that's an, real. It's a novel? That's a real novel. Very good. It is in fact wow. a real novel. <laughs> wow. Damn it. I'm good at this. Wow. Wow. All right, Violet uh-huh. Lady Convenience Wife by Lonnie Howell. Lady Convenience Wife. Lady Convenience Wife. Does this take place in a 7-Eleven? Uh, <laughs> it could um, be. There's there's a subgenre of... Minute. Oh, God, I'm not going to thank you come again? Never mind. Yeah, no, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a contrarian and say that's a real novel. Lady Convenience Wife is, in fact, a uh, neural network. Wow. Derived wow. Book. Yeah. Could you imagine wow. when these things start writing their own books, too? I know. Or, or, yeah. They will be. Oh, that's scary. It's coming. Yep. Yep. Okay. It's coming. Uh, Pete, Surprise Baby for the Air by it's Ellie Darkins. Did you say for the air? For the air. And I will let you know. The air. Air to the throne. Surprise air Baby the for the air. Okay. Huh. It's kind of like, uh, kind of like the last couple of years for me. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say that uh, neural. That's gonna be neural. Neural. Surprise paper for the air. For the air by Ellie Darkins is ex actually a real book. Ooh, got one wrong. All right, we got four. About four more. Okay. 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 All right. So uh, here we go. Uh, pri uh, Violet. Private part by Jenna Marco. 
private not, part. Not to be confused with Howard Stern's autobiography, Private Parts. Private Parts, yes. Jenna Marco. Um, I'm going to say that's a neural network. That is a neural network, yes. Oh, okay. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Wrong button. <laughs> the neural network pressed that. Right, yes. All right, yes. All right. God Peter? damn it. Trons Peter? in my computer. Yeah. <laughs> one, of, one of yours, and perhaps my favorite, uh, regardless of whether it's real or not, my favorite uh, for any book ever, The Rancher's Doorstep Baby by Patricia Thayer. The Rancher's Doorstep Baby. <laughs> Give me all these baby ones, man. The rancher's doorstep baby. The rancher's, oh, well, baby, baby, baby. Yeah. <laughs> rancher's doorstep baby. What the fuck could that even be about? I'm gonna st that's got to be neural. That's got to be neural. I, I don't even. What the, what the, what the fuck? How do you make a story out of that? Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> well, evidently Patricia Thayer did, in fact, do that. So is, uh, is that yeah. real? That is real. Damn it! That's the, right. that's the sequel to the boss's pregnancy proposal. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck do I do with this baby? <laughs> Put it on the uh, ranch doorstep. <laughs> all right, Violet. Here we go. I hear FedEx does that. <laughs> here, here, Amazon here will do it in a day. <laughs> Amazon Prime <laughs> Baby. Comes in on a drone. <laughs> they call burr. the drone the stork. Right? <laughs> in my day, a stork was a stork and it brought babies. Not like these drones. We didn't have drones flying babies around. <laughs> God damn it. I can totally see it. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, Violet. Are you ready for this one? I'm, I'm as ready as I'm going to be. All this right. is Under the Boss's Mistletoe by <laughs> Jessica <laughs> Hart. Under okay. the Boss's Mistletoe. Only if it's oh. on his belt. <laughs> <laughs> Under the Boss's Belt Buckle. No, <laughs> oh, sorry. All right, I'm, I'm going to say that that's a real romance novel. Yeah, it's got to be. Uh, it is. You know what? I, sh I well, should not have read the uh, authors. You probably know these authors' names, don't you? No, I don't I don't read romance novels. That's the thing. Uh, I read slash fiction. Slash fiction is my romance. I, what, I don't, what are there, like six authors in the world there, right? I mean, you right, probably right. know them all. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, Peter? Yes, sir. Peter, this is your last one. Okay. All right, this is the last one. So, The Bridesmaid's Baby. By Barbara Hannay. Hanny. Hen H A N N A Y. I don't know. Hannay. Uh, I'm going to say that's real. That's got to be real. Yeah. The Bridesmaid's Baby is real. Sure. What are you shaking your head, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. It is real. It is real. Wow. Wow. Nice. So that nice. is that. That is uh, the end of the game. Peter, what is the score? <sighs> that was a good That was a good game, Mike. Very nice. So this, yeah. we tied, but you know what, Violet? In, in Mythwit's fashion, this is always the case because we're so generous to our guests. Yes. Get, ties go to the guests. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. You <laughs> are you the win. You win. All right. Yay. Because so, we right, love well, our it, guests. In uh, um, it just a, a, an amazing amount of uh, good uh, fortune and good news, we found out that uh, we're going to be able to see you at Balticon, which we're excited yes. about. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll talk about that. We'll get you on one of our panels, and we'll get you mm -hmm. uh, pimping, even pimping that book even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Uh, Peter, are you doing a reading this year? Because God, you know, uh, we got to have. We gotta, uh, he's like, I don't know. Oh. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Oh. I there's mean, a lot of work, dude. There's a lot of work in prep it, one of those things. It certainly is. Yeah. For I mean, it to go off the rails as it is want to do. It, they always go off the rails. But it's, God it's, damn, it's, do I love doing them. I don't know. You know, know what? Maybe maybe if if, uh, if Spence and like um, of Dave Robeson enough of them bug me to do it, maybe I'll I'll buckle down over a weekend and, and, and cut out a chunk of one of my 50K and, and I'll make it short enough that we can actually finish the fucking thing this time. Yes, um, there you go. All right. Yeah, we, we can never finish it. too long. Spence is already yeah. saying reading, so. Reading. Oh, okay, done. All right, then I guess we got to do it. All right, I'll put something together, Mike. I'll, I'll grab one of the juicy bits. I, I got some juicy bits in there, this one. All right. Good. All right. Well, you, you, you realize who you're saying juicy bits to, right? Yeah. yeah. It's not as juicy. <laughs> well, it's not, it's right. not yeah. that juicy. Yeah. Not okay. that. I think the craziest I got, uh, uh, one of the characters has sex with uh, a, a mentor um mm -hmm. and but i mean you don't see it it's just they go off together and you know what happened mm -hmm. uh and i might elaborate it was on their I, menstrual 
Uh, I might, I might elaborate on that as I go down the road. Uh, the only other thing was uh, there was there was uh, they go to an area that's like Greece. It's it's a it's a similar similar to Greece, ancient like Greece. <clears throat> and these uh, the the one guy's an ambassador, and he goes there, and he's walking down the street, and he's bothered by the fact that he's he's holding this guy's hand because in their culture, men do that. That's a normal thing mm-hmm. that men do, and he's mm-hmm. like. He's like uh, protocol, right? And so he's he's uncomfortable yeah. with it, but he does it because it's protocol. Uh, so that's, I mean, I don't know. Uh, well, all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most of the stuff I write about is like I don't know, beating people up and killing people. Right. I, I write I write right. action drama ish action ish stuff. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. maybe gangstery, like cool. medieval gangstery. Can you imagine? That's it's nice. Good stuff. I like it. I like it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Sounds good. All right, Mike, let's wrap this baby up. Uh, Violet, roll the footage. Yeah, Yeah. thank you so much for coming on. You're welcome back anytime. You know that. Please, Uh, I love love doing the show. Thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks Thanks for coming on. All right, everybody. Let's uh, got to get to that and that. And here we go. All right, everybody. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits. And I think, honestly, I think we really broke ground on this one. Uh, This this was, uh, we we never got this graphic before. Uh, We warned you. uh, And I'm really happy to do it. So um, anyway, so if you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do a like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. And from this episode, love could mean a lot of things. Uh, Tweet us at Mythwits. Wits and check out mythwits.com. Mythwits is produced by Aether Forge Creations as part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out tsrpn.com and aetherforge.com for more cool stuff. And if you like this one, when the gore episode comes out on Game School, totally got to watch that one or listen to it. Uh, Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And check this out. Please don't put your cigarettes out on its back. Thanks, everyone, for listening. <laughs> Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike. The loins of my (laughs) system are aflame with a Tunguska-sized impact.